Nightmare sequences hold pretty much limitless possibilities for any given horror film. Hell, entire franchises have been built around this very concept. With the trope being so prevalent though, some filmmakers do go one step beyond to trick the audience into believing what they're seeing. And this often includes our sleeper waking from a horrific nightmare and breathing a sigh of relief only to suddenly, boom, go straight into a second nightmare we didn't even know we were in. I'm Josh from What Culture Horror, and these are 10 horror movie nightmares within nightmares. Number 10, Jen's Cave Nightmare Revenge. Revenge does pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. This is Mad Max meets I Spit in Your Grave, and it is not for the easily shocked. The film picks up when Jen is invited to her rich boyfriend's weekend hunting getaway in a remote luxury home overlooking a desert. When her fella, Richard, leaves on an errand, his friend Stan viciously sexually assaults Jen. Richard then returns to the scene, and instead of doing the right thing, he tries to persuade Jen to forget about the whole thing by bribing her. She, of course, flees, but Richard persists her, pushing Jen from a cliff and impaling her on the limb of a dead tree. Amazingly, she somehow survives. She finds refuge in a cave, and using some peyote as an anesthetic, she cauterizes her wounds. She then wakes up and prepares to leave the cave when Richard suddenly appears and blows her head off with a shotgun, forcing her awake from a drug-induced nightmare. She leaves the cave again, and again Richard shows up with the shotgun and bang, another nightmare. As she continues to dream, this time it's trippy. There are lizards, there are flashbacks, revenge fantasies, and once again, she wakes up in the cave. So yeah, that's two fake outs in a row. Number 9, Annie and the Ants, Hereditary. Hereditary proved to be one of the most inventive horrors when it released in 2018. Here we followed Annie as she grieves the death of her weird secretive mother and later her daughter Charlie, who is decapitated in a devastating car accident. Racked with grief because of course she is, Annie begins to inwardly blame her son Peter, who was driving the vehicle with Charlie in the back. Consequently, she wakes up one night and watches a series of ants crawling over her bedroom walls and traces them to Peter's room watching in horror as they spew from his sleeping mouth. It's spooky, but then Peter sits up, ants now gone, staring at his presumably sleepwalking mother. Now she seems fully awake, yet the scene becomes increasingly menacing as she explains to the terrified Peter that she tried to have him aborted. As the argument escalates, they suddenly become dripping wet, and in a moment, the liquid ignites and Annie wakes up for the second time. Number 8. Nicolas Cage Falls Asleep on a Bench, The Wicker Man 2006 Okay, yeah, alright, I know, if there was ever one film to kick in the bin on this list, it's the Wicker Man remake. Here, Nicolas Cage plays Edward, a traumatised cop who's asked by his ex to find her missing daughter. Consequently, he makes his way to Summers Isle, a rural matriarchal community off the coast of New England, and before long, Edward finds himself at the centre of a deepening conspiracy. The opening raises a lot of questions. Why do people who are planning to murder a cop behave so suspiciously? Is that really Aaron Eckhart in the diner at the beginning for like all of two seconds, and how do you unsee this film? They're all questions that you'll definitely be asking yourself at some point. Anyway, at one point, Cage manages to fall asleep on a bench by the harbour and dreams of seeing the child floating lifelessly in the water. He then removes his jacket and performing one of the strangest 45 degree angle dives into the water ever put on film, he swims toward the floating corpse. All of a sudden, he wakes up from the nightmare still in the harbour and looks down to see the soaking body is now on his lap, and then he wakes up for a second time, as clear as day, a nightmare within a nightmare. The best part, however, is Cage shouting God damn it as he recovers. It's like unintentionally, utterly, completely hilarious. Number 7. The Demonic Babe in the Woods, Brightburn Brightburn was supposed to be a nice change of tone from the average kid with powers movie, and while perhaps it wasn't terribly well executed, the horror approach is still welcome, albeit a bit familiar. When a spacecraft containing a baby crashes into Tori and Kyle's farmland, they decide to raise the weird kid as their own. Some years later, the little lad, now called Brandon, is an adolescent with more than acne and girls on his mind. He's an alien with some nifty X-Men style powers, and he can throw lawnmowers really, really far. 
Sadly, he's also a bit of a psychopath, and before long, well, just think of young Clark Kent if he was the Antichrist. The nightmare within a nightmare in question, though, is different than the rest on this list, but it still counts. Here, the short sharp shock comes first, as Kyle dreams of kissing Tori before she screams in reaction to something. As Kyle wakes up in bed, he steadies himself and glances to his left, but the wall has merged into a forest, as Kyle is still in a nightmare. This is where the slow burn comes in, usually reserved for the first part of the nightmare in these films. Here, he walks through the forest at night and finds Tori nursing a baby at the alien craft crash site. Peering closer though, he sees the baby begin to ooze blood, and finally looking at its face, the eyes begin to glow red. It is admittedly a nice sequence in an otherwise disappointing sci-fi horror movie. Number 6. The Teenage Pregnancy – Slenderman with the phenomenon of the Slenderman becoming such a viral sensation online, it wasn't before long that Hollywood sniffed out a potential moneymaker and got to work crafting a movie. Sadly, it was your regular, uninspired supernatural fare. Four pals hear of the legend of the Slenderman and decide to invoke the myth himself. So when Katie goes missing, other friends Ren, Hallie and Chloe must find a way to stop him before they all end up as a statistic of the alleged Slenderman killer. In this nightmare sequence, Hallie wanders into the woods behind her house at night, hearing the voice of her missing friend Katie calling her name from the darkness. When Slenderman finally appears though, reaching out with his breadstick fingers, she wakes suddenly back in her bedroom. Making her way to the bathroom mirror, thankfully all just a dream, she suddenly appears to be full term pregnant and tendrils burst from her stomach, prompting the second screaming true awakening and the realisation that she was still dreaming. Number 5. A Nightmare on Sid Street – Scream 3 Obviously, Wes Craven mastered the art of the cinematic nightmare in his legendary film, The Hills of Eyes. Just, just kidding, you know what I mean, my soul to take, obviously. Not one to just let one movie have all the fun though, the legendary director also included a memorable dream sequence in Scream. Three movies in, Sidney Prescott, the series protagonist, has retreated unsurprisingly to a life of seclusion. Unfortunately for her though, all the locks in the world can't prevent Ghostface from making a comeback. However, Sid receives a warning early on in the film in the form of a dream. Whilst asleep on the sofa, she dreams of her dead mother Maureen. She wakes up with a jolt and before she has the chance to recover, Maureen then appears at her window, issuing a warning, saying, Everything you touch dies, you're just like me, Sid. Is this an actual ghost in the Scream series then? Well, afraid not. Sydney, of course, is still in a nightmare. Seconds later, as she creeps closer to the apparition, Maureen suddenly morphs into Ghostface who lunges at her with a knife, waking Sid once and for all. Number 4. Bud's a Bloodbath. It comes at night. A24 has a knack for releasing imaginative cerebral horror movies and It Comes at Night is no different. A post-apocalyptic thriller, in this story the world has been infected with a fatal highly contagious disease. Paul, his wife Sarah and their son Travis live in a house in the woods with a strict security regime and in the opening sequence they're forced to euthanize Sarah's father Bud. They even burn the body to ensure no one else becomes infected by his oozing sores. Young Travis's fears are reflected in his increasingly graphic nightmares though. At one point we find him wandering the woods at night searching for his lost dog. As the barking gets louder, he wakes with a start, thankfully just a nightmare. However, he then sits upright and begins to vomit blood, his arms covered in welts from the disease. To make matters worse, his dead grandfather, his mouth dripping with blood, stares at him from the darkness until he suddenly wakes for the second time. The metaphor is obvious but powerful, but it's still a great film for those who appreciate a slow burn horror. Number 3. Freddy vs Kristen and Nightmare on Elm Street 3 – The Dream Warriors you didn't really think I was going to leave this list without mentioning A Nightmare on Elm Street, did you? By 1987, the Nightmare franchise had been through some teething problems, but it was still considered a lucrative bet for New Line Studios. So, after a movie off, Wes Craven was back for writing duties, now teamed with Shawshank's Frank Darabont. Likewise, the star of the original movie, Heather Langenkamp, was returning as the plucky Nancy. A bigger budget, a surprisingly effective structure, and a confident tone gave us the best Freddy sequel to date. As is often the case with these movies, though, we pick up with a new set of characters, this time led by Kristen 
who's being hunted by Freddy Krueger in her dreams. Kristen, plagued by nightmares, finds herself in Nancy's dilapidated Elm Street house in the film's opening dream sequence. Here, she attempts to rescue a little girl from Freddy's razors and wakes up in a cold sweat. Making her way to the bathroom to wash off the experience though, Kristen reaches for the tap, which suddenly sprouts blades and slashes both of her wrists. Number 2. Nazi Mutants and American Werewolf in London in a story that absolutely terrorised my young British mind as a child, American Werewolf opens with David and Jack, two backpacking Americans, being attacked by a werewolf in the Yorkshire Moors. Jack is killed and David wakes up in hospital in London, having been bitten. As his transformation sets in, David begins to experience visions and this is where things begin to get wonderfully weird. One night whilst in hospital, David dreams that he's back home, surrounded by his family and enjoying an episode of The Muppet Show. When the doorbell rings, though it's sadly not the postman, as a cohort of Nazi mutants armed with automatic weapons barge in. His family is slaughtered and David has his throat cut, waking from the nightmare at this pivotal moment to the sedate surroundings of his hospital bed and the nice charms of nurse Alex Price, who he absolutely fancies the pants off. Alex says that she has just the thing to help, and heads to the window to let the morning light in. When she whips the curtains open though, she's then stabbed in the chest by another Nazi monster who's hiding behind them. It is an absolutely superlative jump scare, thoroughly unexpected, audibly assaulting, and appropriately violent. Number 1. Catherine's Return, Prince of Darkness an underrated John Carpenter gem, Prince of Darkness follows a priest who calls upon the big brains of Professor Howard Birick to investigate the findings of a secret society called the Brotherhood of Sleep. In the crypt of a church in LA, the Brotherhood guard a large vial containing a swirling green substance which is essentially just liquid Satan. The nightmare within a nightmare comes right at the climax, as character Brian grieves for his lover Catherine, who essentially sacrifices herself to save humanity. He sees her emerge from the church in the recurring nightmare, which is a warning from the Brotherhood of the incoming apocalypse, and like all intense movie nightmares, results in him waking in sheer panic. However, he then turns over to see that Catherine is actually lying in bed with him, albeit minus half of her face. Is she trying to communicate from beyond the grave? Who knows, but it's a great jump scare. 